Hi, everyone. It really is bright up here. Everyone says it, but it really is. Um, so I'm Jenna. I'm the founder of tribesports.com. We're a social sports platform based out of the UK, um, Hoxton, East London, if anybody knows the UK well. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about our social commerce strategy and how we are ripping up the rule book and recreating a brand new approach to performance sportswear. When my presentation comes up. Oh, that's me. Sorry. I have a taxi. Cool. Uh, before I start, I did just want to say a big thank you to Stitch Factory for hosting such an amazing event. It's really exciting to be here and see everything that you guys are doing with the downtown project and the amazing work. And I'm really excited to stay in touch with all the connections I've made and see how gui you guys continue to progress things. So before I talk about um, the social commerce side of things, I want to give you a bit of background on Tribe Sports, the brand we are and the platform that we started with. So Tribe Sports launched in um, August 2010 as a platform to help sports people do more in sports. Um, we wanted to create somewhere where people could complete, sorry, where people could create a complete profile of their sporting life. People would connect with other people that shared their love of sport from around the world. They would take on new challenges. It could be anything from running your first 5K to drinking two liters of water a day, every day for a month, to trying Bikram for the first time, to just pulling on your sneakers and going for a, a walk twice a week just to get yourself out there and active. Um, we progressed the platform over the first year to start to allow users to actually track that data, uh, track how they were doing in their sport and how they could improve. And the big thing about our platform that differs us from other sports networks is it's all about celebration. So we encourage our users to celebrate and motivate each other towards their fitness goals. <coughs> and that brings us to our, um, our key brand checkpoints. Everything we do is about motivation, celebration, and education, and how we can really make sure that we are getting our users, giving our users the assets that they need to encourage each other to do more sports. So that's sort of the, the shiny, pretty brand side of it. And then there is the dirty data side of it that really powers all of that. So we're data junkies at heart, and we use our data to per personalize the user experience on the website. Everyone is a different sports person. Nobody really just loves one sport. And often, you love sports you don't even know you love yet. So we use the data that people share with us to map them with other users of the website from all around the world that are interested in similar sports to them, so they can encourage one another to do things more often. We can suggest challenges to people based on their interests. Uh, we can surface content that we think will engage people and help educate them around aspects of their sport or nutrition or general health and lifestyle that they didn't already know. So that's the data side, and then there's the celebration side. We don't really believe in promoting professional sports people at Tribe Sports. The stars for us are the everyday sports people out there sweating it out and doing it for free. So um, I just wanted to pull these up as an example of a campaign that we ran this summer called Game Changer, where we invited people across all so social platforms. It could be uh, Facebook, Tribe Sports, Instagram, Twitter, over email. However, people wanted to let us know what their personal game-changing moment had been in sports. Uh, when they sent it to us, we would then turn it into an epic visual. We'd send it back to them, and they would then share that with their social graph just to really get the message out there about celebrating being active as a really positive pastime for people to have. And again, just empowering our users. So onto empowering our users. We follow the data on the site to improve the user experience, but aside from that quantitative data, we get a lot of qualitative qualitative feedback as well. Um, our users tell us what they want to see more of, what they want to see less of, and what they really, really need us to do. Um, about six to nine months into the site going live, we started to receive a lot of feedback that the users were spending a huge amount of time on the site. It was becoming one of their key social pastimes, and they wanted to celebrate what they were doing online, offline. They wanted to wear the Tribe Sports marks, for real. Um, so we sat down as a founder team and we were like, what should we do with this? We set out to create a social platform for sports people, and now they're telling us they want us to make them clothes. It's not what we had in mind. Um, and we sort of kicked the ideas around and we decided we didn't want to be a brand that created a promotional line of clothing. 
if we were going to do it, we'd do it right. And it didn't feel like the time or we didn't really see an entrance to how we could move into that space. So we decided to take a different approach. And we created a small run of promotional t-shirts that not that anyone would be able to buy, only that they would be able to earn because that fitted really well with what we were doing as a company. So the Join the Tribe t-shirts that you see here, every week we will award at least one of our members with a Join the Tribe t-shirt for their amazing contributions to the website. It might be that they've just ran their first marathon. It might be that they've just encouraged a user that's been offline for a long time to come back and take a challenge with them. It might be that they've engaged everyone in a nutritional debate that's really added value to the content on the site. And we'll send them, wherever they are in the world, a t-shirt, and then we'll give them the podium and put them on our blog and get them to tell everybody about their sports life and what inspires them. So this started as just an idea of how we could engage the consumers more in the brand, and then it kind of opened the floodgates to more and more demand of people really wanting us to sell them sportswear. So it got to a stage where we couldn't really ignore the requests, and we took the feedback seriously, and we put our thinking caps on and began to do some real research around the subject. Um, we looked at the consumer data, how are our users training? We looked at what products they love, what products they hate, the features that they were all talking about in the kit that they were currently wearing. And we, we gathered that and started creating a brief of the, of the kind of thing we felt like this huge set of real sports people were looking for. We then took on <coughs> the opposite side and really went into the quantitative and did some research with our users. We have 210,000 users on the website across 131 different countries, so it's a fantastic base of active sports people to really get feedback from. Um, and the main things that were coming out were really reinforcing what we wanted to do. So they told us that 71% of them really felt forced to make a decision between price and quality, which just didn't seem right. And 84%, which we all cheered when we saw this, said that pro endorsements of sportswear really don't have any effect on the sportswear that they buy. And actually, 82% of them felt that their friends had more of an influence, which is exactly what we wanted to hear. And out of that feedback and reinforcement, the shift of our concept um, was born. And we decided Tri Sports was going to become a community-powered sportswear brand. We never wanted to lose the social platform. It's the lifeblood of Tribe Sports as a brand. We're driven by the users that we serve. They tell us what they want. We progress the platform based on that feedback. So we decided the best thing we could possibly do was use that unique social tool that we'd built to drive a completely new approach to the sportswear market. So this is how we wanted to change the approach. We wanted to crowdsource design through a 200,000 plus strong platform of real sports people. <coughs> we asked them what they wanted the specs of the products to look like, what they wanted the product range to look like, and we gathered that feedback and created a design brief. We worked with some of the top designers in the world that have designed for Olympic gold medalists. We used performance fabrics and construction methods that the best brands in the world are using and manufactured with the top manufacturers in the world that are working with Nike, Lululemon, Adidas, Under Armour, the full shebang. We didn't want to compromise on quality. It was clear from our users quality was important. So we wanted to see where else could we change the model, take a new approach to really give something back to the real sports people. And that was through our knowledge of online. So we wanted to cut out the middleman. We thought by using a global store through our own platform, we could get rid of the wholesale and, br and traditional bricks and mortar retail, which really kills inefficiencies and costs that we allow us to bring the price down a lot for our customer. And then the fun bit, we'd say no to pros. It was no multi-million dollar ad campaigns, no pro endorsements, treat real sports people like stars and pass all of the savings onto them. So they're receiving exactly the same quality product with the brand that they love and associate with, up to 40% of the excess costs removed. So with that concept, we decided what better way to get <coughs> true support from consumers than to kickstart the campaign, crowdsource a community-powered project, get the real sports people from around the world to tell us, yes, this is what we want, this is what we want you to do with us. So 
we went out with a 30-day campaign asking sports people around the world to support us to create the world's first community-powered sportswear line, giving us $50,000 to move our first line from concept stage, where we were, we were actually at final prototype stage, into production, so really just press, press the run button. Over the 30-day campaign, it was phenomenally successful. We had some fantastic feedback, and uh, we came in just shy of 400% of our original target and the concept was validated and we're now moving to launch our store next month. Um, just as an aside, I said that we're data geeks, so I wanted to keep that running in. During the campaign, we were busy working, but our community was busy staying active. Um, between them, they covered with their tr the data that they tracked of their training on the site. They covered the distance around the world twice while we were busy running the Kickstarter campaign, so just proving that they're still out there doing it for the brand. Um, transparency of the full process was really important to our brand. It has been from the beginning, and it's something that we want to emulate through the sportswear side of things as well. So through the Kickstarter campaign, we shared everything from sketch stage to costings of production to benchmarks against existing brands um, to details from our tech pack, taking them through the exact specs of the products, the fabrics we were using. Um, and then we wanted to keep true to the community side of things. So anybody that uses Kickstarter will know that when people reach their initial funding target, they tend to um, put bonus levels in so that when you reach another level, you keep the um, community engaged. So at the first level we reached, we invited anybody who was following the campaign or who had backed us to vote and tell us which colorways, the next color stories we'd introduce into the range. We had uh, over 3,000 responses on that, people really letting us know the way they feel. Um, and then when we reached a further target, we invited them to actually tell us what the next product in the range they wanted our designers to work on was for both the men's and the women's ranges. Really letting them own their marks. So that's really how the Kickstarter campaign went. It was just a great chance for us to get out there and start getting that consumer engagement going and validation for a community-powered brand, real social commerce at work from beginning to end. Now, we want to make sure that we keep that true through the strategy of the whole launch of the store next month. So I just wanted to share some of the things that we will be doing to personalize the store experience. Um, we won't do any standardized seasonal retail discounts or blanket discounts. Instead, everything will be personalized to reward activity. So if you, for example, run 10 miles across the month of November, you'll receive an exclusive discount celebrating your activity and inviting you to receive an exclusive new product or an exclusive offer on an existing product. Um, it's all about communi our community and people who are out there wearing the brand, helping us grow the tribe and get more people to join the gathering. So we're using a great third party plugin if anyone is interested in how that they can help get new members into the, the sites of their building called CureBit, where people can invite anyone across their social graph and they'll receive direct discounts from us related to that. And then back to the real sports people being the stars, we're using a, a third party plugin called Olapic, which is a fantastic tool. Um, and our hashtag is own your marks. It's all about the tribal wearing your marks and being part of a, a big movement. Anyone that goes onto any social platform and puts a picture of themselves on their working out in tribe sports kit and hashtags with own your marks, that will be directly into our site and we'll celebrate you as a sports hero on all of our pages and um, send exclusive discounts out to you. So I've applied it really closely to tribe sports, but I hope that the concept of social commerce is applicable across some of the businesses you guys are working on. I would love to talk to you about it. And I just wanted to recap on what I mean by community powered. So we follow the user data. The, the community leads us into the direction the business should move in, and we follow their behavior and demand. We empower the customer to be central to everything we do and drive the brand. And ownership, you, you can't say it, you have to live it. You have to be transparent with your users. You have to tell them everything about the process and take the good with the bad. Um, and that for us is all encapsulated into the end-to-end -end community powered experience, community powered designed, design, sorry, um, community powered price pointing. Um, they help us with the range planning. The merchandising is all featured around them as individuals. Um, the reactive discount is designed to push them out there to do more sport. 
and all of the marketing campaigns are based on them. We won't have lifestyle shots with um, pros, we won't have lifestyle shots with models. We're using real sports people from around the world all over the site. Um, so as a company, we really believe that social commerce is a two-way communication tool that can help you scale a brand. I don't know whether it's our brand or their brand, but it's working for us and hopefully other people can apply this to their businesses. Thank you.